Hi guys, Dane here, and today I have like just a quick little, I guess an announcement or a mini discussion, I guess as well, but I don't want to keep you guys for too long. Basically, I've made the decision, and it's a shocking decision, I know, I'm going to downsize my library, because I'm at about 2,000 books at the moment, and it's literally got to the point where it's kind of unwieldy now, I keep everything alphabetized, but it, like there are times when it takes me half an hour just to move all the books along in my, in my bookcases. And, uh, like, I know I'm not going to live where I'm living now forever, and it will be a massive pain to move all of these books, depending on where I move as well, because I don't, I might not even stay in High Wycombe, I'm not too sure yet. So that's kind of been making me think, well, maybe I should try and downsize my collection a little bit. I'll talk to you some more in a second about what that, what that actually means. There are some other reasons behind it as well. I mean, it's kind of better for the environment, because if I'm selling my books unused, people aren't getting new copies of it printed. Uh, you know, it'll bring some money in as well, and actually... It's, I'm not like skint, but I'm not loaded or anything either. So I could do with a little bit of cash, but also I can reinvest some of that cash. The idea being like, I have probably a thousand pounds worth of gra random graphic novels that I'm never going to read again. And I could use those and like sell those or whatever, keep 500 quid or whatever for my savings and then spend 500 quid on getting my, a really nice Stephen King collection or something. Especially to begin with what I've started, I've actually started with my vinyls and my TBR because there's a lot of books on there that I was just reading like Nick Hornby just to say I could I'd read every Nick Hornby book and I've realized I don't even necessarily want to own every Nick Hornby book anymore you know so um so yeah so I've been able to kind of cut my TBR and also my wish list down a bit which is quite good too and I'm gonna go through and start like going through and taking all of the random stuff I guess so for example my Agatha Christie collection I'm not going to get rid of any of that at the moment at a later date I probably will but I also again I want to upgrade so that I've got nicer editions so I do have some facsimile editions those will probably be the ones I'll, I'll keep you know uh, and yeah it just seems a lot more feasible for me and then I can get it down to like two or three bookcases as opposed to like I think I have 10 or 11 at the moment Another thing I was thinking, like, if I die, like, hopefully I won't die, but if I die, that'd be a massive pain for, like, my family as well. I don't want to leave them with that burden. And in general, like, I'm kind of coming over to this idea of having less stuff or just having what I need, you know? I don't know. I just like the idea as well of it would be a lot more convenient for me to have, again, two, three bookcases and I can exactly find exactly what I'm looking for. Sure, I won't be able to if I want to talk about a random book like Bunny Suicides or something that I'm never going to read again. I won't be able to just go and pick that up. But I'll have, like, nice little displays for my favourite authors and all this stuff. And even, like, when a friend comes over or whatever, they'll find it easier to look at my books and see what I'm into because they'll only see my, my favourites of the collection represented. So so there's that. Again, space. Space is an issue too. If I can make some more space, then that's a, a, a win for me. Also, then there's the fact that I have my like digital library. So basically, th at the moment, I own every book that I've read or that I remember reading. And then I've also reviewed them all on my book blog, and they're all on um, Goodreads as well. There's even my bookshelf tour videos here on YouTube, which have got like... A, f a fairly recent snapshot of my book collection. So I do have these other logs of them as well, you know? So that is the plan, basically. I have an eBay store I will link to below if you guys want to have a look on there. Like, there is some good stuff. Like, there's some random, like, I've already listed some sign books that I don't, I just don't want to read. I, I will probably keep, because there's like three of them all by the same author, and the one that I read was, was really good, but I just don't want to read the other two. Um, yeah, and some like nice editions. So like, for example, my nice edition of Persuasion by Jane Austen, which I've not nearly finished. And I'm like, I will be glad to have say that I've read it, but also I'll be glad to get rid of it. I don't really want to keep that book, but it is a nice like every man's library edition, you know. So, um, so yeah, and then hopefully actually this because this is going to be a slow process. I don't know, like, I have no immediate plans of moving house or whatever. And again, with like 2,000 books, it's going to take me forever to go through them and. I'll probably still have four or five hundred at least that I want to keep, you know. But, um, yeah, once I've updated it all, I'll do an, an updated bookcase tour as well, I guess. So, yeah, that is the plan. Uh, let me know in the comments if you've ever had to do anything like this or if you're thinking about downsizing your own collection. I don't know, you know. It's all, I've done it before actually, I downsized when I was, well when I was younger, the thing is then I pretty much got rid of everything, which isn't what I want to do this time, I just want to get rid of all the stuff that I have no use for, especially a lot of the ones like, I'm looking up there, there's a book of photography, and it's like that's, I think that's worth 40 quid or something, and it's just like just sitting there, and I don't ever plan to look at it again.
And then next to it, we've got The Person Controller by David Bedil. Never going to read it. iPad for Dummies. Never going to read it. Probably won't even be able to sell that one, to be honest. Um, and then there's like Adrian Baldwin, who's an indie, indie writer, friend of mine. So his Barnacle Brat book. So I'll keep those. So, you know, that's the kind of thing I'll go through and be like, won't keep, keep, won't keep, keep. So, yeah. And also that's quite good because some of the books that I've got that like I want friends to read or that I know friends want to read, I can just give them to them as well. So that's cool. And like I've got a really over there, I've got my really shitty copy of Alice in Wonderland. So this will now allow me to, you know, it'll give me some freedom to go out and buy a really nice copy of it. So, so that's where we're at. So, yeah, anyway, let me know in the comments, you know, your thoughts on this whole debacle or whatever. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit subscribe for more and I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.